One of my big worries, especially from the referendum really up to now, has been what do local councils do? And to explain that situation, we might be wondering, well, why do local, local councils uh, care about sort of the referendum and, of course, um, Brexit? Well, yeah. <laughs> um, here's the thing. With austerity, local councils had to rely more and more on EU funding, not just the EU grants, but there was the whole EU structural development, business grants. There was a ton of stuff that councils had access to when we were in the EU. Because of austerity, uh, very, very much targeting labour areas, these left behind areas, um, things got worse. Things got really worse in these areas. And the only thing that was helping a lot of these areas, or at least keep these areas afloat with, with, with programs and sort of vital services that they needed, was that EU money. And it was so important, so crucial, that something should be done to replace it. But this was what, again, they talked a big game. And I said they would never, ever replace it. And they never did. They cried about, oh, don't worry, these local regions won't lose a penny. And yet we have done. My own, uh, well, at least the former uh, South Yorkshire Regional Mayor, Dan Jarvis, uh, came out and said, yeah, this the sort of South Yorkshire's lost billions of pounds. Money that, you know, <laughs> people like Michael Gove, Boris Johnson, all the Brexiteers said, oh, don't worry, we'll replace them. Well, the, all these funds that they replaced them with have nowhere been near enough or even suitable enough to replace this money. Instead, local councils have been forced to fight it out for even smaller, like, pots of money that are, aren't even being replaced. And... The real problem here is, as we said before, it's austerity and it's councils being told you have to do more with less. And the thing is, we've seen this happen before in America because there was a state, Kansas, I believe it was, um, went super hard into austerity. They went austerity, cut everything, and the state practically fell to pieces. And they had to really undo it all. And because the central government and special the Tories have forced local councils to really take the brunt of austerity, what do you think is happening to these councils after 13 years? And even more, from what we have seen, this especially speed up after councils have been cut off from these pots of money that they had access to. Remember, they had access up to them, or at least some of this funding lasted up until about 2023 which, don't be surprised, is this year. And unfortunately, we are now starting to see uh, insolvencies happening, or a lot of insolvencies with a lot of councils being unable to pay their debts because they've got vital public services that they need to sort of do fulfill. Care home costs have been increasing, which has been an increasing pressure on them. All sorts of stuff that they've had to try and do and deal with, with essentially do more, but just, you know, with a lot less. So we're going to have a look at this today because I think this is going to be coming, I think, an increasingly big problem. And it's all on the Tories. All on the Tories. Not only austerity, but again, that all that loss of the EU funding. And you'll notice, really, the big, big correlation with... Uh, Councils, again, losing that funding, like I say, most of this funding that they all had from the EU was ending in 2022-2023. So after real this year, well, as more as this year goes on, no more money. And if not, you've now got to fight for this really, should we say, a lot smaller pot of money uh, that the central government hands out. And it's not handed out on need, it's handed out, well... Oh, you've got a new Conservative MP, here you go. Or you've all got a Conservative Council, here you go. So, yeah, this is this is a very, very bad, unfortunate legacy. I think this could lead to a lot of very bad outcomes, uh, certainly uh, for these areas that end up uh, in this bad situation. But 
let's go have a look at more close to this because I think this is a very, very um, important story to cover, to be honest. So, as always, please do remember to click on the like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a notation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And of course, as always, thank you very much for uh, all those people who do help and support the channel. And of course, it's Wednesday, so it's Pony Club Day as well. So, Patreon members and of course, Pony Clubbers, you'll be getting your uh, Wednesday uh, Pony Club video today as well. So, Let's crack on into this. Uh, this comes from The Guardian with the title of Local Councils in England at Risk of Insolvency Over a Three Billion Funding Black Hole. More councils could be at risk of insolvency over the coming months as local authorities in England struggle to fill a three billion funding black hole caused by inflationary costs and soaring demand for services, town hall leaders have said. According to the local government association, several councils are in a end game, which again, <laughs> very very worrying to say that that you've got the local government association saying, "Look, some of these councils are in uh, end game territory." Uh, okay, <laughs> that's very worrying. So, the several councils are in an end game where without an increase in funding, they are facing the prospect of taking increasingly drastic action to meet their legal duty to balance the books. The cost of providing the current levels of council services over the next few months are set to exceed existing available funding by at least £2 billion, and by nearly at least £1 billion next year, the LGA has said, because of the huge wage and fuel inflation. Should the inflation stubbornly for, uh, fail to drop in line with the government's March budget forecasts instead of match uh, instead of the match recent uh, Bank of England inflation projections, it would add an extra 740 million cost to council costs in this financial year and an extra 1.5 billion pounds in 2024 to 2025. It said. Peter Mallard, the chair of the LGA's resource board, said that while there were recent uh, council insolvencies such as Thurrock and Croydon, working at Woking and Slough. They were characterized by government failures. Even well-run councils are now at risk of coming to an end of the road financially. So this isn't, as we've said, we've, we've actually covered uh, some of those councils of, of Thurrock and, and, and what went on then. It was unfortunately badly mismanaged council or badly, um, in one case, badly put in uh, economic investments into a lot of building projects. But you're getting to a completely different type of, of, of financial fiasco here even well-run councils are, are running out of resources and it is because as we've said multiple multiple times it is councils expected to provide the same level of service just with a lot less resources but continues so after 13 years of cuts councils were now reaching the point where there was no more room to reduce statutory services and no financial reserves left to actually fill the budget gaps. We will start to see more and more councils starting to declare virtual bankruptcy because they cannot cut services any further, Merlin said. And this is it. Like After 13 years, where do you go? And bear in mind, they've only been able to last that long because they had access to EU funds. You know, EU funds has helped to keep a lot of these councils uh, from going into this state. And again, it was the EU uh, development funds. Uh, there was a ton of different, again, grants and stuff that the you know, councils could have access to that the Brexiteers said that they would replace and they never have done. And I also think it just goes to show you what an absolute failure, once again, the whole uh, policy plan was for, for levelling up. So several councils have only been able to sign off their books for at least 2022 and 2023 by drawing down a one-off multi-million multi pound lump sums, rolling into millions of pounds from reserves. While this does keep them afloat for now, it leaves them vulnerable should they be unable to cut costs in the coming months. We are in an endgame where unless something changes in the medium to long term funding statement, we will start to see more and more councils taking more drastic action, Merlin told the, the Financial Times.
And these financial warnings come as the first Labour chair of the LGA for nearly more than nine years addressed the conference, Sean Davis, uh, 37, the leader of Telford and Working Council, and even the youngest ever <coughs> LGA chair, called for a new deal for councils to try and stabilise town hall services. He said, Sim uh, simplify our funding, cut out wasteful and unnecessary bidding for resources. As we said there, they are bidding, uh, you know, we went over this, of this whole pots of money for the, like, the levelling up um, funding and the, 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 unite, the, the shared prosperity fund. Councils had to spend billions of pounds bidding for resources that they needed. Why was he not allocated on need rather than forcing these councils to to bid for stuff that they desperately needed? It didn't never made any sense. So, and again, uh, cut out the wasteful necessary bidding for resources and give us the long term certainty and stability. With this, we can get on with working to improve people's lives in our villages, towns, and cities. Davis said that councillors had faced a wave of homelessness from late August after over 8,000 Afghan individuals and families had been served notice to leave the bridging hotels they had been put in. We are at crisis point, he said. So, you know, I, I very often say, you know, when it comes to talking about local government, it, it, it's not... It's not seen, shall we say, as the the sexy politics. Everyone really sort of likes to talk about the, the national politics. But where you've got the situation here of all these councils, and it's, again, it's 13 years of Tory austerity, councils being told, you have to do more with less, and them cutting and cutting and cutting, and they have reached a point where they can cut no more, where they've now lost all that EU funding, because most of that EU funding ends in 2022, 2023. So that EU funding is, is what has enabled them to, to really almost get through most of those austerity years, but Brexit came along and happened. Now what? And <laughs> the Tories aren't suddenly going to turn around in, in the autumn statement and say, here's more funding for, for local councils. That's not going to happen at all. There really needs to be, and I, and I agree with them, just look, you need to start allocating by need, not forcing councils who are already cash-strapped and resource-strapped. And, and by resources, I mean people who can actually take the time to fill out those bid processes that you're making them go through to be able to get access to that money. We saw just a couple of, couple of months ago how much councils had to pay for people to come in because they didn't have the people to write those bids. And then, of course, they didn't get the bids. So all that money was then practically wasted on writing a bid to get resources that they didn't get because they were being forced to compete for, again, this, this, this tiny pot of money that they didn't get. And I, I, I dread to think where this is going to go. I, re I really do. But it would not surprise me, as you said there, to see, I think, certainly over certainly over the coming months and the rest of this year, to see more councils um, announce insolvency or, or announce bankrupt, bankruptcy. It would not surprise me. Because I, I do agree. I think councils are at the end. There's, there's no more they can cut. There is no more that they can cut without basically starting to slash um, essential public services. I, I just think that's where we end up but going. But that's where councils are. That's, that is it. So I, I can do completely agree that this is it. This is the, this is the end game. This is the end of, of austerity. This is what it was always going to drive and, and be driven to because, again, the Kansas example... Um, like I say, the majority report did a fantastic um, video all about that and what happened, and it was driven by the exact same, you know, philosophies that that drove austerity.
And yeah, it's it's in a state. It's really in a state. And especially in the north, where you've got to remember, many of these post-industrial towns and, and cities relied on council employment almost to cover a lot of the unemployment that the deindustrialization uh, ended up creating. So <sighs> where this ends up going, it, it's going to be very bad. And I think it's going to hit a lot of councils very, very differently. As you said there, I think you might have councils dipping into massive reserves that they've had just in case. But then they've gone, well, it's, st it's staved off you know, us going in you know, insolvent this year. But what about 2024? So this is yet another, I think, crisis that this government has created and we don't know what's going to happen. And it could lead to some really, really big bad outcomes and it's just what happens at the end of the day to some of these places i mean of course at the end of the day you know central government's going to have to step in and you know bail them out but this is this is it and, and the thing is as, as the article said it, it's not even that these councils are being badly um mismanaged it's even councils that are being you know doing everything right everything correct they are they are managing themselves well it's just inflation and 13 years of austerity and the inflationary cost of the wage increase and fuel cost as well and i really do believe that what the guy said from the local government authority that it's we're just in an end game state so I, I do fully expect to see more and more local councils uh, announcing this, insolvency and bankruptcy. So, as always, uh, thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to click on the like, share, and subscribe button. And, of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and an adaptation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And, of course, as always, thank you very much to all those people who do help and support the channel that way. And, of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.